Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 80 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say relatively popular in the aquarium trade, but it's one of those really oddball fish that those aquarium enthusiasts can find and I personally don't like them, but they're definitely a really interesting fish. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is bam the african butterfly fish so the african butterfly fish or another name for this is the freshwater butterfly fish so don't get this confused when you think of butterfly fish and they're talking about the saltwater species so the african butterfly fish or scientific name pantadon bucolzi again that is pantadon bucolzi um, it is part of the family Pantodontidae, and it's the only species in its family, as you can imagine with the genus and the family sounding that similar. Um, if you notice something about this body shape of this, and you think back to one of our earlier videos, the silver arowana, they look very similar, and that's because this is actually a very distant relative of the arowanas and other bony tongue fish. So, really interesting. They are found in Africa, as you can imagine, but they're more specifically found in uh, West Africa, Niger, Cameroon, Congo, Bas Congo Basin, and they really like waters that are slightly acidic, um, which is very common in Africa, but they really want no current, almost no current whatsoever. Um, and that's a little, um, that's a little tricky sometimes. Um, Something else that they need, they need year-round temperatures of 23 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 73 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so they really like it warm. Now, these are a small fish, not like the arowanas we were talking about. Um, they grow to no more than about 5 inches, which is about 13 centimeters long. And they have a dark brown to this black body. Um, really dark brown this black they got these light speckles going through you go through here you can see some like just different coloring patterns um, different colorings on the fins you know you got these barring so just they're I'm not gonna say they're uncolorful but they're they're very like monochromatic so you know blacks and whites and grays things like that um, they do have this really blunt face, kind of that they really have that arowana head with this thicker body as well. So, you know, just think like basically an arowana, a five inch arowana. Um, but unlike the arowana, they have these really intricate fins, um, really intricate fins. They have these extremely long ventral fins that are like reduced that just have like thread light extensions that go way way down and we'll talk a little bit more about that um but these extensions are what are called an empty fan style so they're like they don't have any of the finish the the tissue between those rays they're just empty hanging down there's a reason for that the anal fin is really large um, you know, there's, if you look on some of these other pictures of the African butterfly fish, um, for reasons, you know, you can see just how like the anal fin is really big when you compare it to the rest of the, uh, body. So it's really large anal fin and it's got this big, broad caudal fin. And then obviously it has these big, broad and really thick, actually pectoral fins that are very enlarged and they extend outward from the side of the body and that kind of is where these are going to get their butterfly part of of um like why they're called a butterfly fish you can kind of imagine this because these really stay at the surface of the water and you can see here's one looking at it from the top down you can kind of see you know moth or a butterfly they have these like you know this dark edge but they usually have this clear area in the middle where you can see through it it's pretty neat when you think about it but they're hanging out at the top of this out of the surface and they actually it's just an interesting fact kind of like the gar species of north america has a very large and well vascularized swim bladder which enables it to breathe air at the surface of the water so it's an uh at least a facultative, possibly obligatory 
air breather. So it's just a really interesting. Now I gave you this picture looking at from the top down. Most of the time, if you're looking at the top of the water, they look like this. It just looks, they look really weird. They're like barely skimming the bottom and they do not move very fast. These um, really like to be in high amounts of surface foliage. So around floating vegetation, very rarely will you see them swimming down like this, but they really like to be up in that surface foliage. And the reason why for that is that's where they're hiding. They're extremely efficient ambush predators that specialize in eating insects that either fall on the surface of the water or low to be plucked off branches or leaves. Because these, kind of like the silver arowana, do and will leap out of the water quite powerfully. Um, extremely powerful jumpers. Um, as I said the before though, they are aquarium fish, so I'm going to say this now instead of talking when we talk about the aquarium thing. If you have these, put a lid on your tank. They will jump out and they will die. They'll just land somewhere else. Um, they have these extremely large eyes. Um, I mean, large mouth. I mean, they're they're a small arowana. They're a small African version of an arowana. They are extremely, extremely, I'm not going to say unique, but they're really cool. Um, now, there is something that's kind of a... A lot of people think these fish can actually glide out of the water. They actually can't. They can just propel themselves at a quite significant speed. And they're enlarged pectoral fins. These fins right here, the butterfly wings, probably do let them glide to a certain extent not to where they can actually like glide like you know your flying fish but just like slow their descent probably a little more than what they would think than you might actually think but i wouldn't say these actually glide now in terms of trying to get these to spawn um it's relatively simple to get these to spawn um if you want to do that in an aquarium trade um, what triggers these in the wild is usually a fresh influx of water um, after a drought. So what you can do is you can just lower the levels in your tank and then add a, a soft, cool, acidic water. And the male will actually get on top of the female. And it seems to be that the fertilization is actually internal. Couldn't really find anything about it. And they lay these opaque white eggs that immediately rise to the water surface and then get caught up in the floating plants. And then after 24 hours, they actually get dark and they start to sink. And they'll sink and in about seven days, um, the fry will hatch. Now it's important if you are raising these in an aquarium, get those fry out of there as soon as possible because the parents will eat them and that kind of goes into the next thing they are a popular aquarium fish 15 to 20 dollars some people say they're not an aggressive fish i'm of the opinion they are an aggressive fish they are if you have these in an aquarium you definitely want to have them and only them as your top water fish um anything else they will get around and you really don't want anything smaller than them on the bottom or in the mid water or in the bottom because they will try and eat them so you want them to have docile bigger things because if you have semi-aggressive fish with them um, you, you look at these filaments hanging down they're very susceptible to fin nippers uh, bigger fish come in and just bullying them and nipping at their fins so you got to think a little bit about having these in an aquarium um, you know it's something like there but I mean, I, I actually consider them a rather aggressive fish. Um, other people have differing opinions. I don't know if you have had these before and whether they were aggressive or not aggressive, please put them in the comments. I'd like to know. I really, really would. Now, for the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on, which I thought was actually going to be how to get these to spawn, um, but it's not. I found something really cool that I had never heard about. Um, in 2010, there was a study found, uh, a study was done that found that there was two populations of African butterfly fish. Um, 
they and they were the populations were separated there was one population within the congo basin and then there was another in the niger basin that look identical like they are basically the same they look the same like experts have an extremely if any good chance of actually telling them apart those two populations however there was a team of scientists um, at the Natural History Museum that found a that did a genetic study genetic study and found an incredible genetic difference um, between the population the genetic sequences between the two populations differed by 15% so 15% genetic difference between the Congo and the Niger populations and that's an extremely high figure you're like well 15% is that high is that low it's you know it, ping it must be high because you're exclaiming about this well it is that that high of a figure surprised everyone on the team surprised me when i read the study um individuals within the same species you would only expect a difference of like two three max four percent difference you know you're talking about two three four percent the fact that populations were had a 15% difference that's more typical of what you would find within a whole fish family so different genera um, that's how different these populations are which is incredible and the fact that they don't have any morphological differences because as the study went on they estimated the div divergence times of the two populations meaning when did those two populations um, diff branch off from each other that happened um <coughs> that actually occurred more than 57 million years ago and so during that you know 57 million year difference you'd expect that the physical characteristics of these uh, two populations to change but they didn't even with like major climatic changes you know all this and that there was you know every chance in the world for these two populations to become extremely different unique species that you know morphological differences things like that but in all honesty they're not they they maintain the the exact same physical characteristics coloration aspects like it's actually it's incredible it's just flat out incredible um they're so great that the two populations may not be able to be bred with each other um which does probably point to the fact that these two are more than likely two cryptic species which is a species that's um like within the same species but are actually two separate species they can't repro they're they can't reproduce with each other and things like that but they morphologically look the exact same so that to me was an incredibly interesting study um and by far one of the most interesting fish facts that we've had in a while but thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please le leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope to see you again um please in these trying times take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace